Hi everyone! Before we start, let me explain you real quick what is a swing and what is swing trading all about. Assuming we have here an uptrend with higher highs and higher lows, a swing is basically every up part from that trend, like this one, and this one is one swing, and this here is also one swing. Swings could represent also the correction, like in this case, this part, this part, and this part. In uptrend market, it's better for us to focus on the upswings because we have much more potential and we are not fighting the trend. We are going with the trend, which gives us over the long run more opportunities and more gains. Swings in the trend direction increase the odds of success if you are not fighting the trend, especially if you are trading strong stocks in bullish market, that's a very powerful strategy and combination. As a swing trader, we try to catch those swings, in this example on the uptrend, and we try to get an entry around this area here and try to scale out and catch the most of the move of this one particular swing, like in this case here. When the swing is over, we are looking for a second opportunity or a second trade in another stock where we are trying to find another entry near the pullback area and EMAs and try to catch the most of the next swing up move and trail our stop. Let's see right away some example. This here is the chart of PC. Similar to our example before, we see here also higher highs and higher lows, which means that the stock is uptrending. I use EMAs, support and resistance, and daily candles for my entries and exits. In this example, PC broke above the 200 moving average and then started to go up, reversed here around the resistance area and tested again the support area of $233, which is also the support area. This is very interesting point here for me, because based on that, I am going to start building my position. Knowing that this is the support area and we are above the 200 moving average just gives me more confidence for going long into that stock and increasing my size. An example for entry strategy using that moving averages and support and resistance areas is as soon as we see that the support area is holding, we are looking for the moving averages and if the stock starts to reclaim those moving averages, like in this case here, we are going to go ahead and just enter the position right here with stop below the support area. This is exactly how I executed that trade and I started building my position around this area here and then I started scaling out around the resistance area, which is $280. After I scaled out some of my position, I used the moving averages as a guide for me and as a trailing stop also and keep the remaining position and trying to go with the trend as long as I can. In this example, we never close below those moving averages here. So you can just trail your stop based on the moving averages and as soon as the stock starts to close below the moving averages, you can close your remaining position. I use as a guide the 9 and the 20 moving average and if the stock starts closing below one of those moving averages, I'm going to close it and be done with that position and looking for another stock or another entry. Something what you should pay attention to is that if you see that those moving averages are getting wide from each other, that is a sign that the stock may start to reverse at some point and we are going to see at some point a pullback. It is also necessary to pay attention to the previous support and resistance areas on that chart. For example, the previous resistance area was at 299, 327 and the high is 342. Those are areas which could be also used for scaling out your position. Or you can do a combination of both. Depending on your size and on your shares, you can start scaling out some around the resistance area and for the remaining position you can use the moving averages or both. Normally I like to give some more more room to those stocks because I know that those are strong stocks and if the market is bullish I want to catch the most of the move and try to stay patient and stay in that stock. Let's take a look at another example for our entry and exits for swing trading. Lulu is a stock which I was discussing a couple of months ago 
and I started trading already here around this area. As you can see here, we never get the perfect entry and the stock would never pull back to the exact support area. In some cases, we have to start building our position and scaling into that position in order to catch any move from that stock. For example, in this case, Lulu didn't reach the support area of 200 and $5. It also pulled back here in this case around the 270 area. If we have waited for that stock to pull back to the support area which was 206, we wouldn't have catched any move from that because we would have waited too long and not joining the trend. Especially in strong uptrending markets and strong stocks, we would see that often that those stocks are not pulling back a lot and they would not always give you the best support areas and best entries which you wish. In that case, we can start using the moving averages as an entry point and scaling in in case the stock goes to the support area. For example, you can start building your position as soon as you see that the stock is reclaiming the moving averages and you can put your stop below the moving average. If you have some more size and a bigger account, you can start some small size here around the moving averages and plan your trade ahead and start thinking of adding to the position around the support area. In this case, your stop would be right below the support area because you're planning to add to that position. So depending on your account, you can either start by reclaiming the moving averages your position here or you can split your position and leave some in case the stock goes to the support area and start building your position here also. On the way up you can start trailing based on the moving averages and scaling out also based on the support and resistance areas. In this example the resistance area of $236 was the area where I started scaling out some of my size. I hold the remaining position because I knew that that's a strong stock, it's trending very well and as long as the stock is not making any huge move to the downside. I am willing to hold and see how far the stock can go and as soon as I see some kind of a pullback, I would look to add another entry to my position or I am looking just for another stock. When you are trading stock guys, always make sure to understand what phase you are currently in right now in the current market. For example, we always have accumulation phase, an uptrending phase, distribution phase downtrending phase and then all over starts again with the accumulation. So the accumulation phase is basically a sideways phase where the market is setting up either for an uptrend phase or for a downtrend phase. In this example when we see a sideways price action, at some point it would either break up or break down. In this case the market broke out. And then after we leave this accumulation phase, we are facing, for example, an uptrending phase. In an uptrending phase, we normally have a strong bullish trend with higher highs and higher lows. Normally, for that kind of a phase, we don't have a lot of pullbacks and the stocks which we are trading, especially in those growth stocks, they are not pulling back a lot so in that kind of a phase it's usually a good idea to use the moving averages as an entry and exit point. As soon as we get to the distribution point everything starts to get choppy, the market starts to go sideways and this is the phase where the most of the traders are caught up and start losing money because they either start chasing highs and don't know what they are doing in that current phase and don't know that the market switch from an uptrending phase for example to a distribution phase. In that kind of a phase the best idea is to use support and resistance as entry and exit points. For example, if you check some stocks in a distribution phase, they tend to test support areas and this is the exact point where you could buy a stock. After that sideways distribution phase is over, we either see another uptrend or probably a downtrending phase. Those downtrending phases, especially in the stock market, are not very long. This is one of the reasons why I am focusing on uptrending phases and I am looking to long a stock and buy the stocks instead of shorting them. 
Those downtrending phases are normally very short, they last for example a couple of months in most cases and it is very hard to keep shorting the stocks because the market environment in the most cases are bullish and we keep uptrending for like 70% of the time so you have more edge and more opportunities on the long side. After that downtrending phase the market starts to accumulate again and normally it starts to go up again. It is crucial to understand in which phase we are currently and therefore when you know which phase we are currently in, if that's an uptrending or accumulation phase, you can start adjusting your strategy and your entry and exit points. If we are in an accumulation or distribution point, you should focus more on buying stocks near support areas and exiting them near resistance areas. If we are in a strong uptrending phase, you should focus on buying the stocks near EMAs, because we don't have a lot of pullbacks and exiting them as soon as the trend is over or using the EMAs as an exit point as well. If you pull up some charts, you can see those market cycles in different stocks, different environments, different markets, they are all the same. Let's take a look for example at Tesla. We see in this area here we had a sideways phase which is a accumulation phase and after that the stock broke out of the highs which was 366 back then and it continued in an uptrend cycle. You see this uptrend cycle is very strong, we don't have a lot of pullbacks. For example the only pullback which we had back here in this case was to those moving averages which are the 9 and 20 moving average and then the stock just continued to go up. So if you recognize that the accumulation phase here is over, we broke out and we are currently in an uptrending cycle, you should focus more on setups which are around the EMAs and pullbacks which are around the EMAs instead of waiting for the stock to test support areas because those support areas may not be tested in a very strong uptrending cycle. After the stock continued to break out, and kept the uptrending cycle, at some point it reached the top and start the distribution phase. As you can see here, the stock started moving in a sideways cycle, it broke the support area of 679 and then it continued to consolidate here in a sideways cycle before it broke down. This breakdown here is what I showed in the previous example, a distribution cycle. After that distribution cycle, the stock started accumulating cycle again and after that it broke out and started another uptrend cycle. As you can see this is very important information because with that information you can adjust your strategy and you can use as an entry the EMAs or combination, sometimes combination of EMAs and support and resistance areas and you would know where not to chase the stock. So I hope that helps guys and you are able to implement some of those strategies. One was the building a position around the support area or just using simply the moving averages as an entry point on some of those growth stocks with huge up potential like we see here in this example with Lulu. Hit the like button if you like this video and I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel.